today I'm going to talk about IAAS, PaaS, and SaaS. What are these? So these are very common questions. Everybody's looking for an answer. So think of a server which existed in your domain, in your network. So in order to put an application up, for example, a machine learning application or a, a website, what you would need is set of hardwares, then you install applications, web servers, set up the network, firewalls, telnet, and all those things, and then you put your app and data on top of it. So starting from getting the bare metal servers to the network, installation, data, connections, everything you have to do. On the cloud, what it provides you is infrastructure as a service. That means it gives you infrastructure, the bare metal, and we are going to discuss this a little bit. Uh, pass, FAS, which is function as a service, which I'm going to talk about today, and then SAS, which is software as a service. So let's understand that when you have on-prem bare metal, you need to take care of everything. So uh, this orange color is data center management, hardware, virtualizations, OS runtime, DRs, backups, application and functions and data. Everything from, from the start to end, the whole nine yards, you got to take care of it. What cloud does and cloud providers like Google Cloud or AWS or Azure, what they do is they provide different categories of workload offloading to the cloud. So for example, infrastructure as a service. Here you offload hardware and data center management. So this color denotes that the cloud is going to take care of, the cloud provider is going to take care of it. And from there on, you take care of OS, runtime, backups, applications, and functions. So what essentially it does is it gives you the bare metal infrastructure. Now, we talk about platform as a service. It gives you an option of offloading a lot of other things like virtualization, OS, runtime, and high availability. Now think of this. A car when you own, you own the car, you own the insurance, you own the maintenance, you own the servicing, oil change, everything for that car. So you own a car, meaning you are on-prem. Now you rent a car. So when you rent a car, you just pay for two or three days. Even if your car is not running and it's parked a rent car, still you gotta pay for those two days that is your infrastructure as a service. So you don't own the car. You don't own the maintenance. You drive the car. So renting the car is infrastructure wherein you don't have to take care of the title, uh, manage the, the servicing, the oil chain, nothing. You've got to take care of the gas as well as the insurance, as well as you had to drive your, yourself. Nobody's going to drive it for you. That is your rental car. When you talk about platform as a service, that means you are Ubering into. So Uber, in case of Uber, you just use the services to go from a point A to point B. For example, you're going from your home to the airport or to your work to, to your home, wherever you are going, you are utilizing the services for those that point, and then you are not supposed to pay for the rent, you're not paying for the gas, you're not paying for anything. All you're paying is the transfer the travel but the car belongs to you for that period of time that is your platform as a service in platform as a service all you have to own is data obviously and applications and functions a typical example of infrastructure as a service is your compute engines the vms which you spin off on any cloud a compute engine vm spinning is just an, a matter of minutes now on any cloud platform. In platform as a service, think of an app engine, wherein all the backups, runtime, OS, virtualizations, hardwares, and data center management upgrades and patches are taken care of by the, the cloud provider. So this is your own car, this is rental car, and this is your Uber. Then comes function as a service. 
I may not be able to do a justice in giving you that same example of the car, but think of an Uber shared pool. Even though you are using those services, but then you are using those services only when it's required. So think of a cloud function. In, in Google, it's known as cloud functions. In Azure, it's known as Azure functions. Here, what you do is you basically, it's an event-based trigger. So if you have an event, you write a small function, it's serverless, it's totally serverless. So you write a function and based on an event, it's gonna take care of either ingesting the data or sending out an email or alerts or whatever. It's a function. You still, you don't have to worry about the app. That's why I have blacked out. But function as a service are those serverless functions which you write to trigger the event. Cloud functions is one of those examples. And finally, the most widely used today in terms of cloud is software as a service. In this, you don't have to worry about anything like data center, hardware, virtualization, OS, runtime, availability, or functions or applications. All you need to do is use your data. Obviously, data is going to be always owned by you. You have your data ownership and software as a service, giving you examples like BigQuery in Google or Cloud ML Engine, Cloud Storage, Cloud SQL. So all of those services which are built, giving you in analogous to car, it is a public transport car or a vehicle or a bus or a metro. So when you use metro to travel, the metro is not owned by you or you haven't called for it. A metro would, you have the shuttle coming in at a particular spot at a particular time. If you want to use it, use it. If not, then somebody else will use it. So software as a service, think of it as a serverless application, which you use as and when you require. The customization level as you go down on the right hand side would be going less. So coming back one more time, on-prem is a car which you own. You got to take care of everything. Nobody's responsible for anything. All the patches, upgrades, everything. Infrastructure as a service is renting a car. So you rent a car for two days or a week or a month and you own the car. But you don't own the title. You don't own the maintenance. I mean, if you want to do it, you can, but you don't have necessarily the ownership. Platform as a service, think of calling an Uber just for yourself or a Lyft or any car share drive. In the function as a service, it is a serverless function in order to capture some events or some things where for which you don't want to allocate a dedicated hardware or an application. So use functions. And software as a service is like any public transport wherein you just use it as is. The level of customization would be higher here and lowest here and so on and so forth. So you use that application like BigQuery, ML engine in software as a service. So this is the definition of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, function as a service, and software as a service. Now, there is another new concept coming in, which is container as a service, which is a hybrid. It's a hybrid between infrastructure and platform. It'll sit somewhere over here. Did not want to complex complicate this slide, and that's why I left the containers as a service out. Think of Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a, is a hybrid container as a service environment wherein it can automatically scale up or down the orchestration of the containers. So Kubernetes, which is basically containerized application orchestration is a hybrid concept. And in Google, it is known as Google Kubernetes Engine in Azure, it is known as Azure Kubernetes Services, AKS. It falls somewhere here. I hope this is clear. Thanks for watching.